Apologies for the rumble. I think there's a loose cable which we'll try and address. We come with what appears to be a mixed message this evening. The tabernacle in green, the stole in gold. Today is a ferial day, Monday, uh, uh, but at the same time, uh, it's an optional celebration uh, of St. Cuthbert. And given I was educated in St. Cuthbert's primary school, and therefore my early years were about reflecting on this saint, for a certain personal uh, commitment, I wanted to make sure that he was recalled this day and his intercession uh, asked for because he is a powerful uh, witness uh, to the Christian faith. If you were going to use the modern uh, thing they like to do with sort of three words beginning with the same letter, then you would have to say that it was about his prayer and his preaching and his poverty. That poverty and humility, of course, a powerful part of his preaching, that he didn't just speak to others, uh, about God, but he witnessed to it in his life. The way in which he constantly, regularly sought during his life to find times of prayer, to live often as a hermit. The way in which he passionately brought the faith to the people uh, around him and the incredible impact that he had on this country in those early years as he lived in the, 17th, uh, the seventh century and as his memory has echoed down since. And that memory echoes very clearly. They built originally the white church to contain his uh, relics. It became, of course, the great cathedral uh, in Durham, which witnesses still uh, to the, the thousands of visitors who go there. Even as recently as 2013, when they redesigned um, the, the, the county flag, they made sure that the cross of St. Cuthbert was in the centre of it, witnessing still uh, in the modern age to that which he proclaimed. Of course we might say, well, it was easier in those days. Many feel that we live uh, in a post-Christian uh, era, in this country at least, and therefore uh, there aren't those who are willing to listen to us, those who are willing uh, to, to be converted, to, to come to God. And yet he lived in a time which was almost identical, not post anything, but pre, inspired by uh, the Gregorian missionaries who'd come over. He took up that mission to proclaim the faith to a largely um, pagan uh, community, a largely pagan country. Therefore, his witness is important to us. He invites us to have courage. He offers us, I'm sure, by his intercession, strength. And we are invited, too, to follow in that uh, faithful strength the example of Mary, who, when the angel came to her, she, too, responded with that real sense of a humble, prayerful uh, acceptance and witness to God. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt amongst us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. 
Pour forth, we beseech O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may, by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. Who are these like stars appearing, these before God's throne who stand? Each a golden crown is wearing. Who are all this glorious band? Alleluia, hark they sing, praising loud their heavenly King. Who are these of dazzling brightness, clothed in God's own righteousness? These whose robes of purest whiteness shall their luster still possess. Still, untouched by time's rude hand, whence came all this glorious band? These are they who have contended for their Saviour's honour long, wrestling on till life was ended, following not the sinful throng. These who well the fight sustained, triumph through the Lamb have gained. These are they whose hearts were riven, sore with woe and anguish tried, who in prayer full oft have striven with the God they glorified. Now their painful conflict o'er, God has bid them weep no more. These the Almighty contemplating, did as priests before him stand, soul and body always waiting, day and night at his command. Now in God's most holy place, blessed they stand before his face. <coughs> you are the fairest of the children of men, and graciousness is poured upon your lips. My heart overflows with noble words, to the king I must speak the song I have made. My <laughs> tongue as nimble as the pen of a scribe. You are the fairest of the children of men, and graciousness is poured upon your lips, because God has blessed you forevermore. O mighty one, gird your sword upon your thigh, in splendour and state ride on in triumph, for the cause of truth and goodness and right. Take aim with your bow in your dread right hand. Your arrows are sharp, peoples fall beneath you. The foes of the king fall down and lose heart. Your throne, O God, shall endure forever. A scepter of justice is the scepter of your kingdom. Your love is for justice, your hatred for evil. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above other kings. Your robes are fragrant with aloes and myrrh. From the ivory palace you're greeted with music. The daughters of kings are among your loved ones. On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. You are the fairest of the children of men, and graciousness is poured upon your lips. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out and meet him. Listen, O daughter, give ear to my words. Forget your own people and your father's house. So will the king desire your beauty. He is your Lord. Pay homage to him. And the people of Tyre shall come with gifts. The richest of the people shall seek your favour. The daughter of the king is clothed with splendour, her robes embroidered with pearls set in gold. She is led to the king with her maiden companions. They are escorted amid gladness and joy. They pass within the palace of the king. Sons shall be yours in place of your fathers. You shall make them princes over all the earth. May this song make your name forever remembered. May the peoples praise you from age to age. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out and meet him. God planned to bring all things together under Christ when the fullness of time had come. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. He destined us in love to be his sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us. He has made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ. His purpose he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God planned to bring all things together under Christ, when the fullness of time had come. From the first letter of Peter. Now I have something to tell your elders. I am an elder myself and a witness to the sufferings of Christ. And with you I have a share in the glory that is to be revealed. Be the shepherds of the flock of God that is entrusted to you. Watch over it, not simply as a duty, but gladly, because God wants it. Not for sordid money, but because you are eager to do it. Never be a dictator over any group that is put in your charge, but be an example that the whole flock can follow. When the chief shepherd appears, you will be given the crown of unfading glory. This is a man who loves his brothers and sisters and intercedes for the people. He laid down his life for his brothers and sisters. This is a man who loves his brothers and sisters and intercedes for the people. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. This is a man who loves his brothers and sisters and intercedes for the people. This is the faithful and wise steward whom the master placed over his household to give them their measure of food at the proper time. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her lowliness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me, Holy his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his sons forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. This is the faithful and wise steward, whom the Master placed over his household to give them their measure of food at the proper time. Let us pray to Christ, the High Priest, who was appointed to represent us in our relations with God. Lord, save your people. Lord Jesus, in times past you've lighted the way for your people through wise and holy leaders. May Christians always enjoy this sign of your loving kindness. Lord, save your people. 
You forgave the sins of your people when holy pastors prayed. Continually cleanse your church through their powerful intercession. Lord, save your people. In the presence of their brothers and sisters, you anointed your holy ones and poured on them your spirit. Fill with your Holy Spirit all the leaders of your people. Lord, save your people. Nothing could ever separate the holy pastors from your love. Do not lose even one of those whom you've redeemed by your passion. Lord, save your people. Through the pastors of your church, you give your sheep eternal life, and no one can steal them from you. Save the faithful departed for whom you laid down your life. Lord, save your people. I'll ask so we might continue our prayer for the well-being of Philomena, who is unwell at this time. And also for the healing and well-being of Eric. More in our we might pray for David, having lung cancer surgery tomorrow, and for his family. We pray for Naomi, who I visited in hospital this afternoon, reassuring her of the support of this community of faith. We pray for Frank Roche, whose funeral is tomorrow, and for his wife Georgina, for the family and friends as they prepare. Anna asks that we might pray for the soul of Jason Scott Clark, who died recently. And Philip Beckwith asks that we might pray for the soul of Dorothea Mary Beckwith, who died recently. We continue to pray for Del Regan and for Rosalind Wildly as we prepare to celebrate their own funeral masses. As we pray on this day for the anniversary of Monsignor Brian Chessel, an extraordinary man, a priest of this diocese um, who did great service in the Secretariat of State in Rome. Um, I think his service to the Church um, will never be entirely known. So we give thanks for his life. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Almighty God, you called blessed Cuthbert from following the flock to follow your son and to be a shepherd of your people. Through the precious gift of your grace and by imitating him in his life of prayer, may we too care for those who seek you and bring them home to your fold. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. 
May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you for your ministry this evening. Thank you, I suspect, to Michael for uh, his IT uh, at the other end of the cables. It's much appreciated. And may the Lord grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail, our life, our sweetness and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the fruit of thy womb, Je the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. St. Cuthbert, pray for us.